Welcome to Vaccine Recommendations for the Older Adult. I am Camille Fitzpatrick. I'm a geriatric nurse practitioner at UC Irvine of Sue and Bill Gross School of Nursing. This project is supported by the Health Resources and Service Administration. Vaccine recommendations for the older adult will cover influenza, Tdap, pneumococcal vaccine, PCV13, PPSV23, and Zoster. This is the one area of geriatric health care that is straightforward. There are very few recommended vaccines for the older adult in comparison to the pediatric patient. The following should be a routine part of preventive health care for all older adults. Influenza vaccine annually, tetanus diphtheria booster every 10 years. All patients should receive one dose of Tdap, tetanus diphtheria acellular pertussis, herpes zoster vaccine once after the age of 60. We will discuss each vaccine further. Pneumococcal vaccination should be given once after the age of 65. It consists of two separate vaccines, PCV13 and PPSV23. All adults 65 and older who have never received PPSV23 should first receive PCV13, followed 12 months later by PPSV23. Adults 65 and older who have been previously vaccinated with PPSV23 should receive PCV13 at least one year after their most recent dose of PPSV23. And for those who received their first dose of PPSV23 before the age of 65 and who will require a second dose, PPSV23 should be administered 12 months after PCV13 is given and at least five years after the most recent PPSV23. Should a healthy 75-year-old who was given PPSV23 at age 65 be revaccinated? Only one PPSV23 is needed, but be sure he received the PCV13. There are no current ACIP recommendations to revaccinate with PPSV23 at this time if patients are immunized at or after age 65. Continuing with influenza, hospitalization rates during typical influenza season are highest for adults age 65 and older. Annually and give as early as available, usually in August or September. However, give it at any opportunity. The peak season of influenza is January and February, but continue until the vaccine is gone. The standard dose of influenza is approved for those under the age of 65. The high dose vaccine is given to 65 and older. These vaccines are inactivated. However, there is an attenuated live vaccine, Flumist, which is available. This vaccine was not recommended for the 2016-2017 season because it was ineffective. As all vaccines are formulated annually, please check with the current CDC ACIP recommendations each year. Tetanus diphtheria booster should be given every 10 years. Tdap, however, should be given if, exposed, if the patient is exposed to infants less than 12 months. There is no upper age limit to immunization if there is no record of a booster. If there is no record of any past immunization or primary series Tdap first, then a Tdap in one to two months, followed by a Td in six to 12 months. From a practical perspective, Tdap is the most commonly available vaccine at this time and typically is used for vaccine boosters. Zoster. During their lifetime, 30% of Americans will develop herpes zoster, which translates into an estimated 1 million cases each year in this country. The incidence of herpes zoster increases with increasing age. About 50% of persons living until age 80, 
five will develop zoster. And multiple cases of shingles can occur. There's a 51% reduction in shingles and it is less severe once the vaccine is given. There's a 66.5% decrease in preventing post-herpatic neuralgia. Recommendations are to get administered to all of those 60 and older with or without a history of chickenpox. There is no upper age limit for zoster vaccine. And with increasing age at vaccination, the vaccine is more effective in reducing the severity of zoster in post-herpatic neuralgia than in reducing the occurrence of zoster. And the final note is this vaccine must be kept in the freezer, so most clinics do not carry it. If you would like more information, these, I would lead you to these references. And thank you and have a wonderful day.